The following is the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita as it is, by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on February 19th, 1966, in New York. Om Ajnana Timidandhasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chakshur Militam Jino Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Hityam Sthapitam Jino Bhutali Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadan Vikam Bande Hang Sri Guru Sri Jutapada Kamalam Sri Guran Vaishnavanshya Sri Rupam Shakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Nitang Swang Sajivam Swadhaitang Shabadhutang Parijana Sahitang Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Nitan Shya He Krishna Karana Sindho Dina Vando Jagatpati Gopis Gopika Kantya Radha Kanta Namasuti Tapta Kanta Nagaurangi Radhi Bindak Vaneshani Vikavanu Sute Devi Pranabhami Hari Priye Manchakalpatarubhasya Kripa Sindhubhaye Bhacha Pratitanam Pavanibho Vaishnavibho Namo Namo Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> Introduction to Gita Upanishad by A. C. Bhakti Vedanta Shami, the author of Srimad Bhagavatam, Easy Journey to Other Planets, editor of Back to Godhead, etc. Bhagavad Gita is known also Gita Upanishad. The essence of Vedic knowledge and one of the most important of the various Upanishads in Vedic literature. This Bhagavad Gita, there are many commentations in English and what is the necessity of another English commentation of the Bhagavad Gita can be explained in the following way. One <coughs> 
one American lady, Mrs. Charlotte Devlin, asked me uh, or to recommend an English edition of Bhagavad Gita, which he can read. Of course, in America there are so many editions of English Bhagavad Gita, but so far I have seen that not only in America but also India. None of them can be uh, said uh, strictly as authoritative because almost every one of them <coughs> have expressed their own opinion through the commentation of the Bhagavad Gita without touching the spirit of Bhagavad Gita as it is. The spirit of Bhagavad Gita is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita itself. It is just like this. If we want to take a particular medicine, then we have to follow the particular direction mentioned on the uh, label of the medicine. We cannot take the particular medicine according to our own direction or by the direction of a friend. But we have to take the medicine under the direction given on the label of the bottle and as directed by the physician. Similarly, <coughs> the Bhagavad Gita also should be taken or accepted <coughs> as it is directed by the speaker himself. The speaker of the Bhagavad Gita is Lord Sri Krishna. He is mentioned in every page of the Bhagavad Gita as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. Of course, Bhagavan uh, is sometimes designated to any powerful person or any powerful demigod. But here Bhagavan is certainly designated to Sri Krishna, a great personality, but at the same time we must know that Lord Sri Krishna, as he is confirmed, by all the Acharyas, I mean to say, even Sankaracharya, Ramanucharya, Madhyacharya, Nimbakushami, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and many others in India, there were many authoritative scholars and Acharyas. I mean, authorities of the Vedic knowledge, all of them, including Sankaracharya, has accepted Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. The Lord Himself has also established Himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the Bhagavad Gita. He is accepted so in the Brahma Sankhita 
and all Puranas, especially in the Bhagavat Puranam, Krishnastu Bhagavan Sayam. So therefore, <coughs> we should take Bhagavad Gita as it is directed by the personality of Godhead Himself. So, in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Imam vivasati yugam pratyaman aham abhayam vivasyan manave praha manu rikha kave bravit evam parampara praptam imam rajar sayo viduhu sakale neha mahata yoganatra parantapa saivayam Mayati Adya Yoga Prakta Puratana Bhaktusi Me Sakasiti Rahasam Jita Uttama. <coughs> the idea is the Lord said to Arjuna that this yoga, this uh, system of yoga, Bhagavad Gita, was first spoken by me to the sun god. And the sun god explained to Manu. Manu explained to Ikhaku. And in that way, by disciplic succession, one after another, this yoga system is coming. And in course of time, this system is now lost, and therefore I am speaking to you the very same yoga system again, the very same old yoga system of Bhagavad Gita or Gita Upanishad, because you are my devotee. And you are my friend. Therefore, it is uh, possible for you only to understand. Now the purport is that Bhagavad Gita is a, a treatise which is specially meant for the devotee of the Lord. There are three classes of transcendentalist, namely the jnani, the yogi, and the bhakta, or the impersonalist, or the meditator, or the devotee. So here it is clearly mentioned, the Lord says to Arjuna, that I am speaking or I am making you the first man of the parampara. Because the old parampara or disciple succession is now broken, therefore I wish to establish again another parampara uh, in the same line of thought as it was coming down from the sun god to uh, others. Uh, so you, you take it and you distribute it. Or the system, the yoga system of Bhagavad Gita may now be distributed through you. You become the authority of understanding. Bhagavad Gita. Now here is a direction that Bhagavad Gita is especially instructed to Arjuna, the devotee of the Lord, the direct student of Krishna. And not only that, he is intimately 
in touch with Krishna as friend. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita is understood by a person who has similar qualities like Krishna. That means he must be a devotee, he must be a, a, in relation, direct relation, say, with the Lord. A, as soon as one becomes a devotee of the Lord, he has a direct relationship also with the law. That is a subject matter, uh, very long, but briefly it can be stated that a devotee is in relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in five ways. Uh, one may be a devotee in a passive state, one may be a devotee in uh, an active state, one may be a devotee as a friend, one may be a devotee as parent, and one may be a devotee as conjugal lover. So Arjuna was a, a devotee in relationship with the Lord as a friend. The Lord can become a friend. Of course, this friendship and the conception of friendship which you have got in a mundane world, uh, there is a gulf of difference. This is transcendental friendship which uh, not, not that everyone will have uh, the relationship with the Lord. Everyone has got a particular relationship with the Lord, and that particular relationship is evoked by the perfection of devotional service. At the present status of our life, we have not only forgotten the Supreme Lord, but also we have forgotten our uh, eternal relationship with the Lord. Every living being, out of many, many millions and billions of living beings, each and every living being has got a particular relationship with the Lord eternally. That is called sarup. Sarup, and by the process of devotional service, one can revive that sarup of oneself. And that stage is called sarup siddhi, perfection of one's constitutional position. So Arjun was in was a devotee and he was in touch with the Supreme Lord in a friendship. <clears throat> now, this Bhagavad Gita was explained to Arjun and how Arjun accepted it. And that should also be noted. How Arjun accepted the Bhagavad Gita is mentioned in the uh, tenth chapter, just like Arjun Ubhacha, Param Brahma, Param Dhama, Pavitram Paramam Bhavan, Purusam Satsatam Vidyam Adi Deva Ajang Bihu Ahustyam Rishaya Sarve Devarasi Narada Statha Asita Devala Vyasa Sayancheva Brabhisime Sarva Meta Kritanamane Jat Mana Badasi Kesava Nahi Te Bhagavana Bhattin Vidud Deva Nadanova 
Now Arjun says, after hearing Bhagavad Gita from uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he accepts Krishna as Param Brahma, the Supreme Brahma. Brahma, uh, uh, every living being is Brahma. But the supreme living being or the supreme personality of God is the supreme Brahma or supreme living being. And Param Dhamma, Param Dhamma means he is the supreme rest of everything. And Pavitra, Pavitra means he is uh, pure from material contamination and his address at Purusam. Purusam means the supreme enjoyer. Sāsatam. Sāsatam means from very beginning. He is the first person. Dibba, transcendental. Deva, uh, the supreme personality of God, Ajaṁ. Never born, be home, the greatest. Now one may uh, uh, doubt that because Krishna was uh, the friend of Arjuna, therefore he might say all these things to his own friend. But Arjuna, uh, just to uh, drive out this kind of doubt in the mind of the readers of Bhagavad Gita, he establishes his proposition by the authorities. He says that Lord Sri Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead not only by himself, Arjuna, but he is so accepted by authorities like Narada, Asita, Devala, Vyasa. These personalities are great personalities in uh, distributing the Vedic knowledge, uh, accepted by all acharyas. Therefore, Arjun says that whatever you have spoken so far to me, uh, I accept them uh, as uh, completely perfect. Sarvameta Ritagamani, I, I check it, I believe it, that whatever you have spoken, they are all right. And your personality, your personality of Godhead is uh, very difficult to understand and uh, therefore uh, you cannot be known by uh, even the demigods. You cannot be known even by the demigods. That means the Supreme Personality Godhead cannot be known even by greater personalities than the human being. And how a human being can understand Sri Krishna without becoming him, devotee. Therefore, a Bhagavad Gita should be taken up in a spirit of devotee of Lord Sri Krishna. One should not think that he is equal on the same level of Sri Krishna, or one should not think that he is an ordinary personality, maybe a very great personality. No. Lord Sri Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, at least theoretically, on the statement, 
of a Bhagavad Gita or on the statement assertion of Arjuna, the person who is trying to understand the Bhagavad Gita, we should accept Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and then with that submissive spirit, unless one receives this Bhagavad Gita in a submissive spirit and oral reception, it is very difficult to understand Bhagavad Gita because it is a great mystery. <coughs> so in this Bhagavad Gita, we may survey uh, what is this Bhagavad Gita. This Bhagavad Gita is meant for uh, delivering persons, persons from the knee science of this material existence. Every man is in difficulty in so many ways, and as Arjuna also was in difficulty in the matter of fighting the battle of Purukshetra, and as such he surrendered unto Sri Krishna, and therefore this Bhagavad Gita was spoken. Similarly, not only Arjuna, but Every one of us is always full of anxieties due to our this material existence. Asadgraha, it is uh, our existence is in the uh, environment or atmosphere of non existence. But actually, we are not uh, a, 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 a non-existent. Our existence is eternal. But somewhere or other we are put into this asat. Asat means which does not exist. Now out of so many human beings who are actually inquiring about his position as to what he is, why he is put into this awkward position of suffering. Unless one is open to this position that why I am suffering, I do not want all these sufferings. I have tried to make a solution of all these sufferings but I have failed. Unless one is in that position, he is not to be considered a perfect human being. Humanity begins when these sort of inquiries are awakened in one's mind. In the Brahma Sutra, this inquiry is called Brahma Jignata, Adhatu Brahma Jignata. And every activity of a human being is to be considered a failure without having this inquiry in his mind. So uh, persons who have awakened this inquiry into his mind as to what I am, why I am suffering, where from I have come or where I shall go after death. When these inquiries come or ever come in the, uh, in the mind of a sane human being, then he is practically the, uh, the right student for understanding. Bhagavad Gita, and he must be Sadhava. Sadhava 
he must have a, a respect, a firm respect in the Supreme Personality of God. Such a person uh, as the ideal person was Arjun. So, uh, so Lord Krishna, he uh, descends uh, just to establish the real purpose of life. When man forgets the real purpose of life, the mission of human uh, form of life, uh, then it is called dharmasya glani, uh, control. So uh, in this Bhagavad-gītā, the subject matter comprehends about the Ishara, the supreme controller, and about the controlled living entities, and prakriti, the nature, the material nature, and next, the time, the duration of existence of the the whole universe or this uh, manifestation of the material nature and the duration of time or the eternal time and karma. Karma means activity. Everything, uh, the whole universe, whole manifestation, cosmic manifestation uh, is full of different activities. Uh, the living being, uh, especially, they are all engaged in different activities. So we have to study from the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Ishara, what is God, Jiva, what are these living entities, and Prakriti, what is this cosmic manifestation, and how it is controlled by time, and what are these activities. Now, out of these five subject matter, uh, in the Bhagavad-gītā it is established that the Supreme Godhead, or Krishna, uh, or Brahma, or Paramātmā, you may call whatever you like. But uh, the Supreme Controller, there is a Supreme Controller. So the Supreme Controller is the greatest of all. And uh, the living beings, they are in quality uh, like the uh, Supreme Controller. Just like the uh, Supreme Controller, uh, the Lord, He has control over the uh, universal affairs, over the material nature, how the, it will be ex explained in the later chapters of Bhagavad-gītā that this material nature is not independent. She is acting under the direction of the Supreme Law. Maya dhakse na prakriti suyate sachalachana. This material nature is working under my direction, Maya dhakse under my superintendence. So we, we are mistaken when we see wonderful things happening in the cosmic nature, uh, we should know that behind the, these wonderful manifestations there is a controller. Uh, nothing can be manifested without being controlled. It is childish to uh, not to consider about the controller, uh, just like a, a very nice motor car with very good speed and 
uh, very good engineering arrangement is running on this street. Uh, a child may think that how this motor car is running uh, without the help of any horse or any pulling agent. Uh, but uh, a sane man or an elderly person, he knows that in spite of all engineering arrangements in the motor car, uh, without the driver it cannot move. That engineering arrangement of a motor car or any electric powerhouse. Now, uh, at the present moment, uh, it is the day of machinery. Uh, but we should always know that behind the machinery, behind the wonderful uh, working of the machinery, there is a driver. So, the Supreme Lord is the driver of Daksha. He is the Supreme Personality under whose direction everything is working. Now, these jiva or the living entities, they have been accepted by the Lord in this Bhagavad Gita, as we will know it in later chapters. So they are parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. Mamai Vamsa Jiva Buddha. Ansa means parts and parcels. Now, as the particle of gold is also particle, a drop of water of the ocean is also salty. Similarly, we, the living entities, being part and parcel of the supreme uh, controller, Ishara, uh, Bhagavan, or Lord Sri Krishna, we have got, uh, I mean to say, uh, uh, qualitatively, all the uh, qualities of the Supreme Law in mind. Uh, because we are minute Isha, subordinate Isha. We are also trying to control. We are just trying to control over the nature. In the present days, you are trying to control over the space, uh, we are trying to uh, float, imitation, uh, planets. Uh, so this tendency of controlling or creating uh, is there because partially we have got that controlling uh, tendency. But we should know that this tendency is not sufficient. We have the tendency of controlling over the material nature, uh, lording it over the material nature. But we are not the supreme controller. Uh, so that thing is explained in the uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita. Then, what is this uh, mater material nature? The nature is also explained. The nature, material nature, is uh, explained in the Bhagavad Gita as inferior, inferior prakriti. Inferior prakriti and the living entities are explained as the superior prakriti. Prakriti means which is controlled, uh, which is under uh, prakriti, real meaning of prakriti is uh, uh, a woman or a female. Just like uh, a husband controls the activities of his wife. Uh, similarly, uh, the uh, prakriti is also a, a subordinate, predomin predominant. The, the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the predominator and this prakriti, both the living entities and the material nature, they are 
different prakritis are predominated, controlled by the Supreme. So, according to Bhagavad Gita, the living entity, although they are parts and persons of the Supreme Lord, they are taken as prakriti. This is clearly mentioned in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that aprayam itastu vidhi apara. This material nature is apara, yam, itastu, and beyond this there is another prakriti, and what is that prakriti? Jiva bhuta, uh, this. So, this prakriti, the constitution of this prakriti is uh, constituted by three qualities. The mode of goodness, the mode of passion, and mode of ignorance. And about these modes, three different kinds of modes, goodness, passion, and uh, I mean to say ignorance. There is eternal time. Uh, there is eternal time. And by combination of these uh, modes of nature and under the uh, control, under the per view of this eternal time, there are activities, there are activities which is called karma. These activities are, are being done from time immemorial and we are uh, suffering or enjoying the fruits of our activities. Just like in the present life also, we enjoy the activities, the fruits of our activities. Suppose I am a businessman and I have very worked very hard with intelligence and I have amassed uh, a vast amount of uh, bank balance. Uh, now I am the enjoyer. Similarly, uh, suppose I start in my business with a vast amount of money. By I failed to make it successful, I lost all the money. So I am sufferer. So similarly in every field of, of our life, we enjoy, we enjoy the result of our work. This is called karma. So these things, uh, ishara, jiva, Prakriti, or the Supreme Lord, or the living entity, the material nature, the eternal time, and uh, our different activities. Uh, these things are explained um, in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, out of these five, the Lord, the living entities, uh, and the material nature and time, these four items are eternal. Now, manifestation, manifestation of prakriti uh, may be temporary, but uh, it is not false. Uh, some philosophers say that this manifestation of material nature is false. But according to uh, the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, or according to the philosophy of the uh, Vaishnavas, uh, they do not accept the manifestation of the world as false. Uh, they accept that the manifestation is real but it is temporary. It is just like a cloud takes place in the sky and the rainy season begins. And after the rainy season, there are so many new green vegetation all over the field we can see. 
and as soon as the rainy season is finished and that the cloud is vanquished, generally, gradually, all these vegetation dry up and again the land becomes barren. Similarly, this material manifestation takes place at a certain interval. We will uh, understand it, we will know it from the pages of the Bhagavad Gita. Bhutta bhutta praliyate. These manifestations become uh, magnificent at a certain interval and again it disappears. That is the work of the prakriti. But it is uh, working eternally. That the prakriti is eternal. It is not false. Uh, because the Lord has accepted uh, mami, mama prakriti, my prakriti, aparayam itattu vidhine prakriti para, vinna prakriti, vinna prakriti, apara prakriti. This material nature is uh, a separated energy of the Supreme Lord and um, uh, the um, living entities. They are also energy of the Supreme Lord, but they are not separated. They are eternally related. So uh, the Lord, the living entity, the uh, nature, material nature and time, they are all eternal. But uh, the, the other item, karma, is not eternal. The effects of karma or activity uh, may be very uh, old. We are suffering or enjoying the results of our activities from a time immemorial. But uh, still we can change uh, the result of our karma or activity. That will depend on our perfect knowledge. We are uh, engaged in various activities, undoubtedly, but we do not know what sort of activities we shall adopt that will give us uh, relief from the actions and reactions of all activities. That is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, uh, the position of Ishara is a supreme consciousness. Position of Ishara, the supreme Lord, is supreme consciousness. And the jivas or the living entities, uh, being parts and parcels of the supreme Lord, he is also conscious. A living entity is also conscious. The living entity is explained as prakriti, energy, and the uh, material nature is also explained as prakriti. But amongst the two, one prakriti, the jivas, they are conscious. The other prakriti is not conscious. Uh, that is the difference. Therefore, uh, the jiva prakriti is called superior because uh, the jiva has consciousness uh, similar to the Lord. The Lord is supreme consciousness. Uh, one should not claim that uh, he, uh, a jiva, a living entity, is also supremely conscious. No. A living being cannot be supremely conscious at any stage of his perfection. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a misleading theory. No. This is misleading theory. But he is conscious, that's all. But he is not supreme conscious. The supreme conscious, it will be explained in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, in, in the chapter where uh, the distinction between the jiva and Ishara is explained. Khetra, Khetragya. Uh, this Khetragya has been explained that the Lord is also Khetragya or uh, conscious. 
and the, the jivas or the living beings, they are also conscious. But the difference is that uh, a living being is conscious uh, within his limited body, but the Lord is conscious of all bodies. Ishara sarvabhutana mridesha arjuna The Lord lives within the core of heart in every living being. Therefore, He is conscious of the uh, psychic movements, activities of the Lord, of the uh, particular jiva. Uh, we should not forget. It is also explained that the Paramatma, uh, the Supreme Personality of God, is living in everyone's heart as Ishara, as the controller. And man, he is giving direction. He is giving direction. Sarvasachaham ridi sannivishya. Oh. Every one's heart he is situated and he gives direction to act as he desires. Uh, the, uh, the living entity forgets what to do. First of all, he makes his determination to act in certain way and then he is entangled in the actions and reactions of his own karma. But after uh, giving up one type of body, when he enters another type of body, just like we uh, give up one kind of dress, one type of dress or another type of dress, Similarly, it is explained in this Bhagavad Gita that Basangsi Jinnani Jathavi Haya, one as one changes his different dresses. Similarly, the living entities, they are also changing different bodies, transmigration of the soul, and pulling on the uh, actions and reactions of his uh, past activities. So, uh, these activities uh, can be changed when a, a living being is uh, in the mode of goodness, in sanity, and he understands what sort of activities he should adopt. And if he does so, then the whole action and reactions of his past activities can be changed. Therefore, karma is not eternal. Other things out of the four, five items, Ishara, Jiva, Prakriti, uh, Kala, and Karma, uh, these uh, four items are eternal, whereas the Karma, the item known as Karma, uh, that is not eternal. Now, the, the conscious Ishara, the Supreme Conscious Ishara, and the difference between uh, the Supreme Conscious Ishara, the Lord, and the living being is, uh, in the present circumstances, is like this. Consciousness, consciousness of uh, both of the Lord and, uh, and the living entities, uh, they are this con consciousness is transcendent. It is not that this consciousness is generated uh, by the association of uh, this matter. No. That is a mistaken idea. The theory that consciousness develops under certain circumstances of material combination is not accepted in the Bhagavad-gītā. We cannot. Uh, consciousness may be perfectly reflected uh, by the cover of, uh, cover of uh, material circumstances, just like light uh, reflected through a colored glass may seem uh, according to the color. Similarly, uh, the consciousness of uh, Lord uh, 
it is not materially affected. The Supreme Lord, just like Krishna, uh, where he says that Maya Dhakena Prakriti, when he, he descends in this material world, his consciousness is not materially affected. Had his consciousness been materially affected, he was uh, unfit to speak about the transcendental subject matter in the Bhagavad Gita. One cannot say uh, anything about the transcendental world without being free from the materially contaminated consciousness. So the Lord was not materially contaminated, uh, but and our consciousness at the present moment is materially contaminated. So whole thing, as the Bhagavad Gita teaches, we have to purify the materially uh, contaminated consciousness. And in that pure consciousness, the actions will be done. Uh, uh, that will make us happy. We cannot stop. Uh, we cannot stop our activity. The activities are to be purified. And these purified activities are called uh, bhakti. Bhakti means they, are, they appear also just like ordinary activity, but uh, uh, they are not uh, contaminated activities. They are purified activities. So, a, a ignorant person may see that a, a devotee is working like an ordinary man, but uh, a person with poor fund of knowledge, he does not know that the activities of a devotee or the activities of the Lord, they are uh, not contaminated by mm, uh, the impure. <coughs> consciousness of matter, the impurity of the three gunas, modes of nature, of the transcendental consciousness. So our consciousness is materially contaminated, we should know. Now, uh, when uh, uh, we are uh, such materially contaminated, that is called our conditioned stage, conditioned stage. And the false ego, the false consciousness, the false consciousness means is exhibited under the impression that I am one of the product of this material nature. That is called false ego. The whole material activities, jasātma buddhi kunapet vidhāt, okay? The sātma buddhi guna okay? One who is absorbed in the thought of bodily conception. Now the whole Bhagavad Gita was explained by the Lord because Arjuna represented himself with bodily conception. So one has to get free from the bodily conception of life. That is the preliminary activity for a transcendental Who wants to get free, <coughs> who wants to be liberated, uh, he has to learn first of all that he is not the uh, material body. So this consciousness, the material consciousness, when we are freed from this material consciousness, that is called mukti. Mukti or liberation means to become free from material consciousness. In the uh, Simad Bhagavat also, the definition of uh, liberation is said, uh, uh, mukti hitva anathārūpam sarupena avastiti, sarupena avastiti. Mukti means 
liberation from the contaminated consciousness of this material world.